Hey there, everybody. Thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'll be taking a look at the first three issues of Limo Lemonade Tango that I picked up uh, at MoCA. These are self-published things from the artist Henry Urich, and I really, really enjoyed these, really enjoyed the cartooning in them. The first two, as you can see, are risograph jobs, so that's really cool. Always love that look and the colors that you get in that. And then issue number three looks like either a digital or an offset printing. Um, but really great cartooning all the way throughout, really great use of the two spot colors and everything. All three issues have this story in it, which is Bonjour Paris, We Come in Peace. And this is about uh, this character here, uh, who's going to be taking his partner Martha to Paris on a trip and is hoping to propose for her. And she thinks that aliens are coming and so doesn't want to go. Um, I really like this scene right here where he's getting ready to go out the door and she's like, I'm not going to go. And then the cartooning on this of him like still heading towards the airport, but also being like, whoa, 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 wait, what? Um, that's the kind of really great cartooning that's persistent throughout these books. And the simplicity of the designs of each character and the way that the shapes are used in composition and stuff like that combined with this pencil rendered look that's now been translated into uh, you know a color with the risograph is really nice and then the pile up of this second color to create the, these like second tones is really nice throughout throughout this whole book here um, so really enjoy that story then you get a couple shorter pieces do you smoke this just seems to be like an auto bio thing about getting caught as a kid uh, and then there's a longer piece here, Twas the Night of Thanksgiving, and this is fun. It's like a kid's book poem with some illustrations going on with it in a comic format. It says this isn't for kids, though, because there's, you know, some something grotesque that happens, but not really. Uh, you just, there's a joke here at the end, but it's not terribly grotesque. So this would make a really good little kid's book pamphlet. And then there's some pretty funny back matter, including... Uh, one of the goals here is to just fill space, so just filling space with this dark, dark chunk of rectangle there. And then all these fun little designs that persist in all of the issues, which are really cool as well. So really enjoyed this first issue. Really excited to read the second one. The second one holds up just as well. Again, a really nice riso printing. Again, love the simplicity of the cartooning here. And then this tiger in the background being done with the pink. Um, this one has this first story, which is again really funny and subverts expectations. I would say Henry Irk is also a really good writer at having a nice little twist ending, but setting up stories where you don't feel like you need a twist ending, but this one's all done, done sideways. I especially like this part here where the color change is used to show memory. So this is this old woman who always wants to listen to her neighbor playing the cello. And the pink versus the blue here, the blue like literally feels like it's three-dimensionally lifting off of the page or because of the way the pink's so subdued, it almost looks like it's laid down on a piece of vellum. And it has, even though it is all flat, it has some real like dimension and tactility to it, which looks absolutely beautiful. So that's pretty much the first story there. And then you get a couple more short like poetic pieces. And again, you get these design borders here that look like, you know, really intricate. So they look like they were drawn in black and then scanned and reversed, probably. Um, and then going in with like these trading card kind of, again, super abstract, really shape-based designs that are really, really nice. I particularly like this one here. Uh, and then you get one more uh, little gag thing about spelling bees. Some some more like uh, really great, like the cartooning with the pencil type of line work it looks like and then we come back to the the main story that's been running through all of these um, now these characters are building a platform for the aliens to come land on and again i just love the use of shape and the use of the texture of the pencil the composition and everything here the cartooning of it all just really makes a beautiful spread and a beautiful image and you can see this tower being built higher higher and higher while all the storms are going on in the background I just think it's a gorgeous image. And then again, you get really funny back matter and stuff like that. Then in issue three, we switch over to what looks like a digital print, uh, but you still get the two tones. 
the the because the inks aren't actually going on like one and then another you don't quite get that same sense of things being three-dimensional or lifted but again you get a, a really nice story with really nice cartooning this is a part one so this is i'm assuming going to continue continue and eliminate tango four uh, but this is about these people who are invited to go play music at a spooky old mansion and they're wondering if the people they're playing for are ghosts or not so that takes up the majority of the issue and then you switch over there's no uh, no little shorts in between you switch over to the uh the bonjour paris we come in peace number three and you get the wrap-up of that story i don't want to give away what it is but it's it's a really really touching and beautiful little ending i particularly like the cartooning on this where there's like this light shining through like the aliens are going to be coming and then the cartooning on the cloud splitting and turning that beam into just everything opening back up is really nice. But yeah, there's, there's a really nice ending to that. I'll just leave you on the ending page. Really enjoy that story. Like I said, Eric seems to be a really good writer at subverting your expectations kind of multiple times throughout a story. You're like, you're not expecting this to turn into an alien story in the first one. And there's little, kind of hiccups in the story that are unexpected all the way along, little surprises. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out with um, this out of tune piece as well. Uh, so a really, really great anthology, like one man anthology with a lot of different stories. Someone who has, like I said, a, a really, really good ear for writing, I think. And then just some really great cartooning abilities and cartooning abilities in a, a variety of, you know, it's all kind of the same approach, but also there's some pretty distinct looks and feels and approaches to the thing that I, I imagine this artist will continue expanding upon as well. So this is somebody I'm very excited about, someone I'm really glad, never heard of, never heard of Henry Urich, uh, just ran into him at MoCA. Really glad I found his table and found his work. So I'll be continuing to follow along and continuing to support his stuff. Um, there's definitely some other books that I didn't pick up that I'm going to have to go back and pick up at some point. I just wanted to get like a nice little preview of, of his work with everything that I was grabbing at MoCA and not disappointed at all. So, so far, I've been 100% on the things I've got at MoCA. They've all been awesome, but I have a, <laughs> a big stack to go. So hopefully they're all this great. Hopefully my d tastes were that great and I knew what I liked ahead of time. Because um, I've really been enjoying everything so far. And this is just another win in that. So definitely an artist everyone should check out. HenryUrich.com or at HenryUrich on Instagram. If you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel and you would like to support us, there's two ways to do that. The first way is through our Patreon. We have two different tiers of engagement there. In the first tier, you just get early access to all of our videos. In the second tier, you get exclusive voting rights to help control what happens to a character in our ongoing web experiment, comic experiment in AI and storytelling. Uh, and then you get also exclusive previews of work personal work that Sean and I are doing, the graphic novels that we're working on and things like that. Any of the money that we get from Patreon just goes back into helping us buy the books that we review. So we turn it back into the community, other creators, other publishers, and it just helps us keep you all in a steady stream of new things to think about buying and check out. So we really appreciate that. And then if you want to support Living the Line itself and the mission of Living the Line, the best thing to do is support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll go ahead and take a look at one of his projects now. The Exile by Eric Creek is a gorgeously illustrated Viking saga of revenge. Eric Creek calls it his Viking Western. It's about a, a guy who's been away on the, the war path and is returning home um, to a, some family troubles that have to be resolved. And this is told in just this amazing, like kind of three color art style that looks like old woodblock cuts or something. It's absolutely gorgeous book that you've got to pick up. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. What's your 